Hello people, my name is Laser Haas. Actually, it's Steven Haas, but everybody's called me Laser for the last 40 years, except my wife, pain in the ass. Who I'm divorced from for 20 years, thank the Lord. Anyway, um, I'm afraid I'm not gonna be around too much longer. They've tried to run me off the road three times and got successful one time. And I've had two accidents in a row as you can see, I got my arm in the sling, and then the second one, I wound up bleeding from my head. Uh, I'm Mitt Romney's pain in the ass. I'm also Donald Trump's. They had a dinner meeting right after he got elected, and Trump nominated uh, Jay Clayton, who's a partner of Sullen Owen Cromwell, whose wife was a 20-year partner at Goldman Sachs, and Jay Clayton bragged on his resume there at Sullivan and Cromwell that... Uh, uh, he was, you know, heavily invested in Bain Capital. I was the court-appointed CEO of eToys.com in the Delaware Bankruptcy Court. And uh, because my mom and dad were an organized crime and I had a felony conviction when I was 18, 19 years old, they thought they could bribe me a million dollars and offer a partnership with Mitt Romney, who is a racketeer, uh, to betray my court-approved clients, which was eToys, uh, uh, company, shareholders, creditors. And I told them to go F themselves. It's a movie moment. I'll explain it in another video. Uh, it's pretty cool. I just told them they were lucky I didn't have my gun because the last time I'd have all 14 even MFs in the same room together. I had no idea how much trouble blowing the whistle, turning down a million dollar bribe and a federal case would cause me. I had the Chief Justice Mary F. Walworth who appointed me and they were going to sell eToys.com in 2001 to Bain Capital KB for $5.4 million. I stopped that and got and got Bain Capital KB to bid tens of millions of dollars. I had a hundred million dollar merger with Scholastic and a company called Playco. Unfortunately, Paul Traub was the creditor's attorney for the eToys bankruptcy case, and Paul Traub is still withholding the fact that he worked for Mitt Romney, Michael Glazier, and Bain Capital at stage stores before moving over to eToys. Romney owned the lion's share of the stock at stage stores. Michael Glazier was CEO of KB Toys, uh, who they made a director at stage stores. Barry Gold was the stage stores executive assistant, who was also partners with Paul Traub and a paid member of Traub, Boniquist, and Fox Law Firm. Harold Boniquist worked for the United States government. He was the, the general counsel to the consulate general, and he was listed at having to be contacted by reaching out to the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. I got that form disbanded in 2005 because I proved that Paul Traub and Barry Gold were partners, with, and what they did was, is MNAT, Morris Nichols Arson Tunnel, the Delaware Court Approved Council for eToys, withheld the evidence, lied under oath, about it also being Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs attorney. In 2005, I got MNAT to confess that they withheld the information about Goldman Sachs. And the issue there is, is that what Traub did is he asked the U.S. trustee for permission to replace me. And the U.S. trustee, Frank Perch, assistant U.S. trustee, told them no, that they couldn't replace me with anybody connected to them. Traub not only disobeyed that direct federal order, Traub did the extensive, heinous, and egregious thing of replacing me with Barry Gold, who is his personal partner in Asset Dispossession Advisors, and I got that confessed because they worked other cases that they didn't know I had the access to where their affidavit bragged on their letterhead that they were co-principal partners. But in eToys, M&AT is eToys debtor counsel and court approved as my counsel for my company, Collateral Logistics Inc., expenses and success fees for turning around and taking 5.4 million and turning it into tens of millions of dollars. Now you would think the lawyers would be happy because they usually get 50%, but Barry, 
uh, Barry Gold, Paul Traub, and M&AT regularly work for Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs, if I'm successful in selling eToys to Scholastic and merging with Playco, Traub and Barry Gold and M&AT's regular clients, their more lucrative secret, illegal. And, and, and it's not ethical rocket scientists, people. The creditors' council cannot be partners with the CEO of the debtor, especially after being forewarned not to do the same damn thing. But that's what they did. Um, they did this after M&AT and Goldman Sachs helped Mitt Romney, Thomas Lee Partners, and Bain Capital get involved in the learning company that was merged with Mattel in 1999, the same year that eToys went public for $85 a share, but we only got uh, less than 20 and what's called a classic pump and dump stock fraud spinning scheme. To see more about that, look up New York Times, uh, March 2013, rigging the IPO game by Joe Nasir. He found another smoking gun. He found an email from Lawton Fit, the head of the eToys IPO, bragging that the stock would go to $80 a share. So they deliberately underpriced it. They gave it to handpicks like Meg Whippin and other people who would spin back 50% of their windfall profits to Goldman Sachs. Now, after M&AT and Paul Traub forged my resignation papers saying I gave away the most money I made in my life, millions of dollars, um, and they inserted Barry Gold into my chair as the president and CEO. Then Liquidity Solutions, whose code debtor with stage stores bankruptcy, started buying up Detroit's claims. Now anybody, including the debtor or any creditor, can buy the claims to strengthen their position. But you have to disclose it. You're not allowed to profit one penny. Being that they didn't disclose it, and I believe that's the way they got back the tens of millions of dollars I made Bain Capital bid higher, they were doing fraud against their court approved clients. Barry Gold, MNAT, and Paul Traub, when e choice shareholder Robert Albert asked for the rightful legal right to have a creditor's equity committee for stockholders, they told the judge no, that they had their back which elevated the fiduciary duty of those people to the shareholders also. Instead, in March 2013, uh, January 2013, when the New York Supreme Court of Appeals said that my case of eToys versus Goldman Sachs could go forward, Paul Traub rushed to settle it for $7.5 million. How Paul Traub got to settle it is after they locked me out, Barry Gold and m and both working for Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs, nominated Paul Traub, working for Wells Fargo, Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs, to be the one to sue Goldman Sachs. So in essence, Goldman Sachs sued Goldman Sachs on behalf of eToys, and eToys shareholders and creditors got screwed twice, actually three times, but that's a more uh, 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 story to explain. They got screwed twice out of a billion dollars. Now, they continue to obstruct justice, retaliate against me, and Robert Albert was dead after they offered him a bribe, and when he said no, they told him, people like you who turned down a bribe wake up dead. He had to kill Michael Savoff. Paul Traub was control partners of Tom Petter's Ponzi. I sued Fingerhut because they lost $100 million worth of eToys orders, and Paul Traub and Barry Gold, after I was locked out of eToys, they turned around and settled, and Paul Traub and Tom Petters Ponzi bought Fingerhut with Petters Ponzi fraud monies. And then right before the FBI raided Petters Ponzi, Paul Traub went in, rearranged the ownership where Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs gave $50 million to Fingerhut. And wow, guess what? The federal receiver of Fingerhut, Petters Ponzi, didn't snatch and seize Fingerhut. Instead, Douglas Kelly, who was Tom Petter's attorney, when Ritchie Capital sent in a federal receiver to seize Polaroid and Sun Country Airlines and whatever other assets to cover with money, Doug Kelly switched sides from being Tom Petter's attorney and was appointed the federal receiver. 
And the reason they could get away with this is Marty Lackner was part of the feeder fund of Lancelot in Chicago, who's the one that talked Richie Capital into investing in Polaroid and Petters. But not investing, but giving them a bridge loan money, a temporary bridge loan money of, of over $100 million. Marty Lackner was part of the feeder fund of Lancelot Skybell, and he had an ace in a hole. The ace in a hole in Minnesota was James Lackner, was Minnesota Assistant United States Attorney, head of the criminal division that I was given notice to for years, because I owned the PettersFraud.com website about the need to investigate Paul Traub, partnership with Tom Petters, that was also partnership with Mark Dreyer. Now, Mark Dreyer is a lawyer in New York that's doing 20 years in prison. Tom Petters is doing 50 years in prison, and nobody touched Paul Traub. Because right after, guess what? Joe Biden got fined $219,000 for getting cheap airline tickets. One of the sweet deal, low bids that you're not allowed to have, by the way, you know, there's federal election commission laws, was they flew, Joe Biden flew while running for vice president and president in 2008 on Sun Country Airlines that was also owned by Tom Petters and Paul Traub. And if you think those three didn't get to meet each other, you're out of your friggin' mind. I got pictures of Biden on Sun Country Airlines and news stories about him. They've made them all disappear, but I got them. Now, beyond that, right after Biden was in office, he flew in to Minnesota, have a campaign fundraiser by the Poolad family that owns the Minnesota Twins. Engaged to the Poolad daughter was Douglas Kelly. And all of a sudden, Nobody's allowed to prosecute or touch from the Washington, D.C. office, the U.S. Attorney's office in Minnesota for being connected to Tom Petters Ponzi. Now, on top of that, they claim that Tom Petters Ponzi is only a $3.7 million fraud when in actuality, it's over $40 billion. The reason why they couldn't allow the number above $40 billion to be is how they buried the Mark Dreyer fraud, New York lawyer in jail for 20 years, partners with Paul Traub, Dreyer LLP, and partners with Tom Petters Ponzi with Paul Traub, was because of U.S. Attorney Cone Connolly. Cone Connolly was assistant U.S. Attorney when Fingerhut, KB Toys, E Toys, and Mattel $5 billion fraud happened. How they turned around and covered up his crime is they made him partners of MNAT the very law firm that did the Mattel merger and also was the attorney for eToys and the defender of Bain Capital when Michael Glazier paid himself $18 million and Bain Capital $83 million before he filed bankruptcy of KB. And I blew the whistle on that case too. It wound up on the cover of Rolling Stone, uh, Green Debt, a true story about Mitt Romney and Bain Capital. And I told Ted Abe he didn't have to give me credit, but he had to do the follow-up story, which he never did. Because Penske Media bought out Rolling Stone, and since then, Tabby hasn't said one word about Malaysia 1MDB, Goldman Sachs, its new CEO, all the bullshit, Bain Capital, or Mitt Romney. And I got all the emails to prove it, folks. Anyway, so la di da, they do the Yates memo, they're gonna arrest corporate arbors. Eric Holder, though, says it's complicated. You gotta consider the economic impact. Bullshit, right? He turned around and had the gall to say if there was any cases, I gave him the cases a dozens of times. I'm a convicted felon. If I lied one time to the DOJ, FBI, they could put me in prison for the rest of my life. I'm 63 years old. The way it's going, I don't have seven years left. I may not even have seven weeks. But screw those bastards. The one thing I did right is I told my son when they tried to settle with me in December 2015, when Romney thought about running again in 2016. As I said, you may get your inheritance back. He said, screw my inheritance. Nail the bastards. They made you suffer too long. So at least I did something right. Anyway, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, not all the FBI is bad, not all the DOJ is bad, but they common sense. They see that everybody that gets involved gets retired, gets fired. 
And there's 12 people that wound up jail. John and Jay Casero, I helped them sue Mitt Romney, put up the websites in 2008 on a Quitan case. And by the way, the recent uh, protest against Loyola Marymount was protest against Sedesco, which is Mitt Romney involved, right? But Jay Casero didn't get to spend the money. All of a sudden, went in millions of dollars in a Quitan case. He walks into his doctor's office and goes loony and stabs the doctor and gets shot and killed. Isn't that convenient? E-Choice shareholder Robert Albert had to shoot and kill Michael Sazoff, a career criminal convicted 36 times, right? And the sheriff ruled right. It was justifiable homicide. But Robert Albert was told by Johan Hammerski, who was partners, bragged about being partners with Jack Abramoff. And I got congressional emails that proves that Jack Abramoff was trying to get control of the Region 3 U.S. Trustee's office. So their ace in the hole was to get rid of us. And Johan Hammerski told Robert Albert, people like you who turn down a bribe usually wakes up dead. And Albert woke up dead. Three days afterward, FBI Special Agent Scott Duffy from Baltimore, Maryland called me and I was all excited and happy. Finally, unfortunately, my guy had to lose his life for us to get justice. And what actually happened, folks, was he threatened me for an hour with prosecution if I didn't take down the name of Ellen Slights and Comb Connolly from my websites. I told him to go F himself. I emailed it and got it for anybody who wants to see that they should come after me and stop trying to corrupt everybody else. And Scott Duffy sent me an email thank you and asked me to keep him in the loop. But when they nominated Comb Connolly to be president, he gave up the ghost and became part of the dark side. Toys R Us was killed because Mattel helped Mitt Romney, who got 12 million shares of Mattel, and Thomas Lee Partners, who was a consultant of Mattel, who was Mitt Romney and Goldman Sachs partner, and the learning company merger of Mattel helped put FAO Schwartz, KBE Toys, Zany Brainy into bankruptcy. As a matter of fact, E Toys and KBE bankruptcy multiple times. The fourth time for E-Toys was winding up as part of the bankruptcy of Toys R Us. But each and every time, except for Toys R Us, because now he's caught too much, right? Paul Traub was creditors counsel, making sure that nobody could outbid Bain Capital. This is not ethical rocket science. I got confessions. I can pound the tables with the facts. I can pound the tables with the law, and I can pound the table with confessions. But when I sued Mitt Romney for racketeering in Los Angeles... The judge said I was inconsequential. And the Ninth Circuit said that all this stuff I just told you is insubstantial. Shows they're either incompetent or bought off. And the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, Judge Kent A. Jordan, who probably goes to church with Mitt Romney, called an emergency hearing October 16, 2006, and told everybody your lives are on the line, that he believed us that we could file a new brief. Three weeks later, he was promoted to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. With him on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals is Walter K. Stapleton, who was an m and partner who Combe Connolly clerked for before he became Assistant U.S. Attorney. Now, Combe Connolly was Assistant U.S. Attorney of E-Toys from February 11, 1999 to August 2, 2001, the very same exact time that Romney claims he was retroactively retired. Jack Wheeler walked into Combe Conley, the U.S. Attorney's Nemours building in Wilmington, Delaware, and wound up dead in a dump on Christmas Eve. Anna Schaefer, who I sent back to Minnesota so she could become a private detective, wound up dead from Lightning Queen cancer right uh, Christmas Eve. Robert Albert dead. Jake Asiro dead. Both the Madoff sons dead. Matthew Goldstein was going to do the story. I got the emails on Paul Traub getting away with the fraud in E-Toys, being partners with Mark Dreyer, who's doing 20 years, and partners with Tom Petters. It's a big story, even without the fact that the U.S. Attorney's brother was involved in the case. I was never indicted, by the way. And Marty Lackner wound up dead. I couldn't get the file from him. Because he wound up dead. 40 years old, not indicted, three kids, no note, dead. Said he committed suicide. 
And until recently, James Lackner was still at the Minnesota U.S. Attorney's Office. I'm going to hunt him down and harass him. They call me a vexatious litigant. You damn right. I have the right to vex racketeers, organized criminals. My daughter was kidnapped on my birthday in 2004. And I had to go to the hospital and sit there while I waited to find out if the girl that was dead in the morgue matched my daughter's description. Larry Reynolds, who sat 25 feet away from me from another company, bankruptcy shoe liquidators, where Lonnie Williams and David Williams' relatives were partners with Mark Dreyer. Larry Reynolds is not his real name. It's Larry Rezovich Reynolds, and he laundered $12 billion, confessed it, which got him more jail time for the Tom Petters Ponzi case. And he did this, ladies and gentlemen, while in Wistech in Las Vegas. And Mike Katane confessed that he laundered over $10 billion. And then there was Frank Venice, a billion. There was Palm Beach Link Capitals, oh, uh, two billion. There was Lancelot Sky Bell, two billion. On and on and on. Uh, I mean, if you put Robin Williams, Mel Brooks, and Richard Pryor in a room and gave them all the drugs in the world and nothing else for 30 days, they could not come up with the stuff that's so surreal in this case. But that's because you'd rather do one thing's wrong, 1,000 things wrong, than to confess and go to jail. And the people that turn around and turned a blind eye got ensnared where they are duplicitous in racketeering organized crime that includes mayhem and murder. Judge Walrath needs to be removed from the bench. Colm Connolly needs to be removed from the bench. Ellen Seitz needs to be in jail. Colm Connolly needs to be in jail. James Lackner needs to be in jail. Paul Traub needs to be in jail. I don't care about the rest of the people. Fine them, declaw them, do whatever you want, right? Just stop them from being able to do crimes to anybody else. But the people that were involved that could have stopped the mayhem and murders and the people who had an oath to protect us, they need to go to jail. You need to send a clear message. Bernie Sanders is the only one I can trust for a United States Attorney General that will stop this shit. And I don't think his people know how bad it really is. I don't think anybody knows how bad it really is. The Public Corruption Task Force, I filed a December 7, 2007 complaint once I had the proof that Cone Connolly was a partner of MNAT with the Public Corruption Task Force in Los Angeles. And the Public Corruption Task Force was shut down 10 weeks later and the, the federal prosecutors were threatened to keep their mouth shut about the reason why. And you can see it. The article, LA Time, is called Shake Up Royals Federal Prosecutor. John Ashcroft tried to help. He wrote a, head, a letter saying the number one problem with corruption in the United States is corrupt federal judges and collusion with high-ranking members of the U.S. Trustee's Office. The FBI has threatened to put me away for emailing them saying it's violation of the Electronic Spam Act. Can you believe that shit? Right? And, and John Ashcroft wrote that statement and said that Americans are held hostage, ostracized, and, and retaliated against where they have nowhere to turn. I have a place to turn, and that's President-elect Bernie Sanders. I love the guy. I've been to 54 events. I've had my picture taken with him a dozen times, right? Uh, he's our only hope, ladies and gentlemen. He's our only hope. This is not a political statement. It's just a fact. Joe Biden buries the crimes and corruption. You can go to Lopucky, L-O-P-U-C-K-I, dot com, Professor Lopucky wrote about corrupt courts, routine illegality, judges routinely ruling illegally for the sake of big uh, bankruptcy fee cases, right? And Joe Biden tried to ostracize him. Lopucky.com. You can see the bullshit that Joe Biden said in return. And Elizabeth Warren, boy, if you weren't a female, I'd cuss you up inside, down and down the other. You know, uh, I, I forgive you about the, the Indian thing because... It's all hearsay. We're, we only know what our parents tell us. And some parents tell us one thing and some parents tell I didn't find out I might be Jewish until 45. My grandmother, who I thought was my grandmother, was actually my step-grandmother. My real grandmother died when my mom was born. So I learned a whole lot of different things about life at that time. Went to synagogue, you know, became from of rabbis. Um, but I consider myself a Jew for Jesus philosophy agnostic. Because I don't know what to believe anymore. There's so much bullshit out there. But I do know this, 
Liz Warren, while she was a college professor at UCLA, I sent her the details. Before she became the Consumer Fraud Protection Bureau, I've sent her this stuff over and over again, and she's done jack shit. And guess where her senator seat is, lady and gentlemen? Massachusetts, Bain Capital. Until she turns around and calls for an investigation in this case, she's part of the problem. So the only person that's always said that Wall Street fraud is being protected by corruption is Bernie Sanders. And guess what? I just got an email from his staff and sent them my 99 pages by the 99% about more than 99 crimes committed by the 1% and it's titled The Hell They Can. The Hell They Can Do All These Crimes, Over 100 Crimes, Destroy E-Toys, Gymboree, KB Toys, FAO Schwartz, E-Toys, Rip off finger hut victims. And again, doing bankruptcy over and over again and again, stiffing the same creditors, landlords, delivery companies, employees, 40,000 people out of work. All because nobody would do their damn job against Bain Capital and KB and Paul Traub. I got confessions, people. I've helped disband Nixon Peabody, Hutchins Wheeler, Cronus Lee, all tied to these cases, right? Right. Uh, uh, when you prove the heat and they're going to lose their malpractice insurance, that's how law firms disband. And the biggest thing is I helped another uh, get word out where Dewey LeBluff wound up and they actually put out in the public all this because of a damn blogger. Not because of a damn blogger, but because we blew the whistle and the truth hurts. The truth is immortal, immortal and inflexible. No matter what you do to me, You can't kill the truth. You can try to bury it all you want. The truth is Goldman Sachs needs to be punished. The day after I sent new CEO David Solomon the letter of what he inherited, his general counsel retired. And he's cleaning house, but he still has unclean hands until they talk to me and settle with me right, stealing a billion dollars twice and having me sleep on benches Hotel rooms with bug bites. Not seeing my kids or my grandchildren or holding them since my daughter was kidnapped in 2004, you fuckers. Until they do proper justice, Goldman Sachs is still a racketeering enterprise. Bain Capital should be destroyed. And everything they earn taken away. They're companies that can be resold for extrinsic value. When will you dumb mofos at the FBI, Department of Justice, and SEC realize I'm not your thing? The billions of dollars that you can give all the good old boy law firms from ripping those guys the asshole anew, they deserve. Please out there, somebody, the Diogenes quest be fulfilled. These guys deserve an ass woman by the long arm of the law, and their house of cards is miles high. All anybody has to do is sneeze, and M&AT law firm will go down. Greg Workheiser will go down. Robert Denny will go down. Uh, Rachel Workheiser, who's now working for the chief judge of the Delaware bankruptcy court. His office is infected too, right? The wife of Greg Workheiser. They all need to go down, ladies and gentlemen. I can only do it with your help. I'm insignificant. I may not be here. I pray that if I'm gone, that somebody takes up the torch collectively and points it out and do it as a group. This way they can't annihilate or harm anybody else. My girlfriend is Judge Mary Elizabeth Bullock. She suffers. She's a federal retired judge. Suffers from MS, lupus, about almost dead with cancer. She turned down doing a rigged case and they destroyed her and they won't let her have her bar card back. A sweet hard woman, right? I can't even see her and stay around her though she invites me in because I don't want her in harm's way. And she's suffering, right? She's in the twilight of her life and she's been dedicated to nothing but good and you fuckers destroyed her. Melanie Bodner, uh, David O, you know who you are. 
um, Ken Abram, uh, Richard Fine, Stephen Donziger, man, a lawyer who was an activist who believed in the system, and he's got a tyrannical judge destroying him, and nobody's doing anything about it. It's like everybody wants a thieves paradise. I just pray somebody gets some chutzpah. It's time that we turned around and turned things around with President Attorney General, uh, President Bernie Sanders and an Attorney General that's pure. I give away all the money and I'll sleep in a damn bug infested room the rest of my life. Make me Attorney General of the United States. Watch how I whoop ass. All you guys that have been doing part of the corruption, it's time to leave the house, mofos. Once Bernie wins New Hampshire, you're done. Trump couldn't beat him stealing 20 million votes. We'll get 20 million and one. It's a new world, people. All you have to do is believe in truth and justice. I do. And I believe there's people out there in the Department of Justice that, that are working with me. I got the resume of Colm Connolly. It's at the Office of Legal Policy. Permanently archived. I now have Stephen Pikin's resume. I sued Trump to block Jay Clayton from being head of the SEC. And the, the clerk of court in D.C. refused to put it in the record for two months until after Jay Clayton was confirmed. After Jay Clayton was confirmed and the judge signed the order to dismiss my case before the papers were even clocked in. Can you believe this shit? Excuse me, I'm sorry, people. After Jay Clayton was confirmed, he nominated Steve Pikin and a decent federal officer gave me Steve Pikin's thing. It turns out Steve Pikin was a partner at Solomon and Cromwell, but before that he was a federal prosecutor in the Southern... District of New York, an SEC task force guy. Jay Clayton needed to hire him to be top enforcer to make sure this case got buried. Roberta DeAngelis, you need to be crucified and your money taken back. Mark Kenny, the trial attorney that was partners in all this and gave Paul Trump immunity and he didn't even have the legal authority to do so. You need to be called back, right? Anybody that did wrong with this case needs to be punished to send a clear message. We need to clean house. Because right now, they're thinking they can get away with it, and they're looking for more targets worldwide. This Malaysia 1MDB was just part of the problem. Don't let David Solomon bullshit you and say it was a single aberrant act of behavior. Greg Smith said in 2012 in a letter to the New York Times, uh, uh, an executive at Goldman Sachs, that he resigned because they were calling us, their clients, muffets. You can't let lawyers and fiduciaries like Goldman Sachs defraud their clients. It's absurd. You're asking for the American